Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Project Build. This episode we're going to be looking at installing these shims into my center differential. My center diff here came from my B6 O and E uh, transmission. I just freshly rebuilt this with the one-two collar uh, and synchros. And uh, the last part to assemble it all is to pop in the center diff. And before I want to do that, uh, I want to install these uh, center diff shims as they, as they call them. Now these shims, what do they do? They uh, give the car a more rear bias feel. So right now this diff is set up for a 50-50 split in terms of power distribution from front to back. These shims will allow to do a, what they call four to one or an 80 to 20. So 80 in the rear, 20% in the front power. So it's gonna feel a lot more squirrely going around corners. The shims are different sizes and thicknesses. This one, these two here, uh, this one's got kind of a uh, chamfer on the edge on one side, whereas uh, this other shim is square cut all the way around. Uh, these came from JHM. Uh, it was about $190 Canadian just to get to my door. Half of that was just shipping costs, was ridiculous. Um, if you don't feel like going to this extent, you can send your diff in for uh, to get rebuilt itself, um, but that takes time and you got to ship this thing and, and all that stuff. So, and it's about four times the price as this, I'd say. So the tools you're going to need are, uh, six thirty seconds by inch and a half screws. So pretty easy at the hardware, uh, a tap. So a six thirty second tap to go along with it. I found, well, this is just my makeshift T handle for this guy to hold it. That worked out quite nicely. You're just going to want to mark some stuff down with some grease pens. Uh, your tape to hold some things together, vice grips, and a hammer, and some lubricant. So this is the pin that you're going to be removing. There's three of them on the diff. These things are located right in here. And uh, you don't need to drill it out at all. You just tap it, put your screw in, and then all you do is clamp it on down with some vice grips, and then you hit it with a hammer. We'll go through that. So when you're doing these, now that the uh, pin has come out, these pins that hold your gears in are going to want to slide out. You can see these just came out completely on their own. They're fairly, uh, it doesn't take much for them to come out. So that's where guys say they take tape and tape these edges that way they don't fall out. Um, as long as you're aware that, that that is happening, that as you leave your diff down, it's just going to slide out. Uh, then you don't really need the tape and just make sure you're holding it as you're going around The next thing you want to do is make sure that your your gears are clocked to each other So you can see I've got the two marked off here with the one Exactly where they need to mesh into each other So I'm gonna make sure I do that on all my gear sets and then I'm gonna want to make sure that this gear it was back in this location in this orientation. I don't want to make I want to make sure that this doesn't end up upside down or anything. So uh, there's a couple ways you could do that. It's entirely up to you uh, how you want to go about making sure you verify what sides on what. Um, and the grease pen really helps because the stuff's just going to wash off afterwards anyways, and uh, it's not that big a deal uh, depending on how much you use. So um, you can do this that way in so 
the gears in the center here are going to want to come out. You can see uh, we've got two gear sets for the front to rear uh, different or front to rear transfer power, and in between you have these uh, washers. And uh, we're going to be replacing, from my understanding, is these two right here with the Teflon coatings on them. And uh, you want to make sure that you don't mess up any of these others. You see, there's certain thicknesses between them all. They're all different and uh, you want to make sure you don't flip one around 180 degrees um, just because they're placed in a certain fashion for, for a reason. So we're going to go ahead and uh, get rid of these two uh, gear sets on this side and uh, when you do that, you know, make sure you're holding some part of this while you're taking the last gear set out. It's already feeling a little loose. so. And be, be cautious of your, uh, your your marks, you can easily wipe them off, so uh, you want to make sure um, if you do happen to touch them, uh, that you just reapply them. And Alright guys, so there it is. I got the center piece out. Um, and you can see the differences in all these thicknesses. Some have a taper, some don't. Some have these uh, indents on them and, and you really don't want to mix these up. So uh, let's start looking at what we're going to be changing here. Okay, so yeah, I was just checking out uh, where the rear of the car is. This is going to be the rear of the car. So the very first uh, washer uh, matches up with your tapered washer. So you can see this tapered washer has this Teflon coating on it and the JHM1 supply does not. So that's a pretty easy uh, replacement. You can see the taper is pointing towards the front of the vehicle. So we're just gonna go ahead and swap that right out. The next one is in the middle. So you're gonna wanna make sure you don't mess these up either. This has got a, a raised collar here on the, on the pointing towards the front of the vehicle. And you're gonna wanna make sure that that stays there. So an easy way is just keep stacking your stacks as you get towards the center. So this is the center piece that you're going to be replacing. And to my understanding is that this is swappable as a JHM piece. It doesn't matter which way you go with it. You can grease these all up with uh, some gear oil if you want. Uh, you can do that now, you can do it afterwards. Um, but essentially that's it. Now that this is it, I'm going to go ahead and put these pieces back in because they came in out separately. So all you want to make sure is that you're lining up your marks. And I've got the one mark there and the two on this guy. And you just pop them in. Okay, right, so I was struggling with the uh, the last the last gear set. Um, one would go in okay, and then I could not get the pin to get the last one in, no matter how hard I tried. And you don't want to use a hammer at all. They should go in naturally. <clears throat> now, what I ended up doing was going back. I removed these gears, the first set or the the first set I installed. I took these guys out uh, and started messing around with how it aligned with uh, the, the the center gear set. So I took both these out and I put one in while I was making sure to hold this against, uh, I guess the ones that I never took out and the first gear I put in and then align the next one. And what I noticed was that when you're doing this with your gears, uh, your center stack barely moves from each other. Now what was happening before when it was stuck and I would do this, the center stack would offset depending on which way you were going. You can still kind of see it there as I'm doing it, but it's very minimal. And uh, when I was doing it before and it wasn't fitting, like you would see it jump up and down. So definitely uh, the alignment of your first gear in relation to this needs to be well seated. So once you have that, and then it doesn't matter, you can do whatever you want. 
um, with this, as long as this is also well seated. I mean, it's gonna be well seated anyways, because this is gonna definitely locate it. Um, and then you should be able to just pop this in with little to no resistance. None at all, so there. And it's perfect, it, it moves freely. Uh, you dump some oil in there if you want. I mean, it's gonna be sitting encased in oil anyways while it's uh, waiting to be uh, started up for the first time and, and it's gonna be a slow start anyways. So, you know, oil's not critical at this point unless it's sitting outside. So anyways, that's it. Everything works, nothing binds. Um, I'm gonna go put the last pin in as well, which you just need to drive in. Uh, one thing you wanna make sure you're doing when you're putting the pin in, is uh, you want to make sure the uh, the main pins aren't sliding out. So as I'm going to hammer this in, this might want to the bottom one might want to walk out. So you just want to keep an eye on that. Make sure you're pushing that in as you're just driving this in. So there it is, the four to one center diff mod complete. All the alignment marks are still working, and uh, or, or or where they should be and it's ready to go back in. Um, hopefully this helps some of you guys out there with your uh, four to one mod and uh, please feel free to leave some comments in the comment section below.